ever since the first Iron Man movie and Man of Steel movie came out for Marvel and DC, there have been characters that have come out together and to make a whole universe together. For example, Iron Man, Thor, Captain America, they had their own movie. And also you can include Hulk, but Mark Ruffalo's Hulk, he didn't have his own movie. But anyways, all four of them, they came to make the Avengers movies together. And for the DC Universe, Men of Steel, Wonder Woman, and Aquaman, they were the three main characters that came out in the Justice League movie. And the Flash and Cyborg didn't have their own movie. My point is that characters have come together to make their own movie and create this whole universe. But today I wanted to speak to you about the Tim Burton theory. As you can tell by this photo, people have been speculating over the years that this kid is the same one that came out in Corpse Bride and also The Nightmare Before Christmas. But to make this theory true, you have to change one thing, one important thing for this whole theory to become true. Fair warning guys, there's going to be spoilers for Corpse Bride, The Nightmare Before Christmas and also Frank and Weenie. So if you guys have not seen those movies, I would recommend it to please go watch them and come back to this video. First things first, Victor Van Dor did not stay with Emily at the ending of the movie. Instead, he stayed with Victoria. You could see that Emily was gone. She was finally ready to go to the next world because her unfinished business was already done. But I want to change one important thing, one important thing that can actually make the Tim Burton theory come true. What if Victor Van Dort actually married Emily? This one thing can actually make this whole theory come true. What if he actually married Emily? Well, to tie in how this it could be related to the Tim Burton theory, you have to use actual facts. Victor Van Dort has a different accent than Jack Skellington and also Victor Frankenstein. He's British, he's not American. You may think that the theory could still not be true because of that. Well, you have to use actual historical facts on this theory. You have to ask yourself, what if Victor Van Dor moved to America? Because you have to look at the actual setting of when Corpse Bride took place. I immediately after watching this movie, that's when I started watching The Nightmare Before Christmas and then Frank and Weenie. You have to watch them in this particular order. So like I said, you have to ask yourself, when did the British move to America? When I was doing my research, I looked at the peak immigration period where people were traveling to the Americas. The peak immigration periods were 1620 through 1760 and 1850 through 1920. And that's when I figured it out that this theory is still could be true because Corpse Bride took place around the late 1800s. See, 1850 through 1920. That's the peak immigration period where people from Germany, Ireland, and England were traveling to America at this time. Victor is from England. He has a British accent and he's from Britain. And another thing you have to ask yourself, why did they went to America? Well, some few reasons was because they had crop failure, land and job shortages, and rising taxes. And how many traveled to America? Around 12 million people from Germany, Ireland, and England traveled to America in the late 1800s. And in the movie, Victor Van Dort's family, they were fishermen, and also Victoria's family side, the reason why they wanted her to marry Victor Van Dor was for him to take care of her because he had the most money from the two families. Victor and Victoria from Corpse Bride were betrothed because the Everclots, which is Victoria's side of the family, needed the money or else they were going to be living on the streets. And the Van Dors only wanted to be high in society, like how I said guys. That's a good reason why Victor Van Dort might have moved to America as well. All these questions that I asked myself, they were all making sense because they were tying to the movie Corpse Bride. 
The movie took place in the late 1800s. There was a high amount of people that moved to America. So now let's ask yourself, what if Victor married Emily? At this period of time, there were unnaturally airplanes, so they had to move by boat or ships. And since Victor was married to Emily, he was already on the land of the dead and couldn't leave that area. Because Elder Cotonet, he told them that he would have to give the life he had forever. He would need to say the vows in the land of the living and drink from the wine of ages. The vows only were binding until death drew them apart. Emily is already dead, so that meant that death already parted her. If he chose this path, he may never return to the world above, which was the land of the living. And so let's just say that he took his vows and drank from the wine. He wasn't a living person anymore. And so how would he have gone to America? Well, since the land of the dead is somewhat connected to the land of the living, it was kind of the same thing. He just only had to travel by boat to America. He wanted to look for better possibilities in America. And so he moved with Emily. They moved across the land of the dead. That's how they did it. And now to answer the main question, is Victor Van Dord, Jack Skellington, and Victor Frankenstein? No, he is not. That is not Jack Skellington and Victor Frankenstein because of their accent. Victor has a British accent, and Jack and Victor Frankenstein have American accents. But Victor Van Dord is actually Jack Skellington's father. Victor and Emily got married. They also had a child together, and that child turned out to be Jack from the Nightmare Before Christmas. Since Emily had Jack in the land of the dead, Jack came out as a skeleton and not a, a normal human form. Jack was the first of his kind who was able to walk from the land of the dead to the land of the living. He grew to like scaring people around the world and later they called him the Pumpkin King. And his ability to go to the living world, he was known everywhere. For example, in one of the songs he was singing in the beginning of, of the movie, he mentioned that one of the men that spotted him nicknamed him Mr. Unlucky in Kentucky and was known around the world, including England where his parents were from. Did you remember when Jack found the trees that had the holiday symbols? Well, Victor and Emily found these trees first. Victor and Emily were planning to go inside the Halloween tree, but couldn't because they couldn't leave the land of the dead. Only Jack would since he was half human and half corpse born in the land of the dead. Victor and Emily didn't find Jack's actions of scaring others creepy. They accepted it since they were already living in a place with different creatures on it. They were already used to it. In this timeline, Jack did know his parents. When Victor and Emily passed, like how Emily did at the ending of Court Bride, Jack decided to move to Halloween Town, where his parents couldn't go. Since he liked scaring people, he thought that Halloween Town was the best place that suited him. Eventually, Jack was known across Halloween Town as well. Time runs differently in Halloween Town. In A Nightmare Before Christmas, the background story for Jack is said that he was burned alive before he became the Pumpkin King in the movie. To fit what happens in the backstory for A Nightmare Before Christmas, Jack was burned alive in Halloween Town. The only way he could have become a leader for the people of Halloween Town was he had to be reborn as one of them. That is how we came to know Jack Skellington. Jack changed his last name that was given to him by his parents to Skellington to match his appearance. Jack always wanted to become a leader for a group of people and he managed to do it. There was no leader in Halloween Town and Jack decided that it should be him to lead them and so he stepped up to the play. Time passed and passed and that's when A Nightmare Before Christmas started, the movie. Jack was the ruler of Halloween Town. 
The townsfolk could not live without him, as we see when he goes missing once in the movie. Jack Day grew tired of ruling Halloween Town, since he was a leader for quite some time already. When the movie was finished, we got to see that he ended up with Sally. Sally was the girl who had a crush on Jack since she laid eyes on him. Before Jack and Sally had their child, Jack and Sally decided that their child wasn't going to be raised in Halloween Town. Jack wanted what was best for his child and he didn't want his child to make the same mistake he did. Jack was afraid that his firstborn was going to follow his footsteps and would want to rule Halloween Town like him. Jack also thought that people at Halloween Town were going to think that once he got very old that his son was going to be the next person in line to rule Halloween Town. That is why Jack and Sally made a difficult decision of leaving their child in the front doorsteps of a loving family's house. Jack and Sally had a baby boy. He came out in normal human form. The only logical reason why the child came out in human form was because Jack had Victor Van Dorp's blood in him. Victor wasn't a corpse yet when he had Jack, and so his blood passed to Jack's son. Now more than ever, Jack and Sally wanted their child to fit in with the human world. You remember the trees with the symbols on it? Well, Jack and Sally went through the Christmas tree for one last time to leave their baby boy in front of the doorsteps of a loving family. If you notice the houses that Jack visited during the movie when he was leaving presents for the children, he decided that he should leave his son there in one of those houses. Jack did give his son a name for the family who were lucky to have him. There was a letter that was on the side with the baby. The letter says something like, Hereby, please take care of my Victor. Jack named his son Victor, just like his father's first name. This is now when Jack's story finishes with him ruling Halloween Town with Sally by his side and a new story emerges with his son. The family that were lucky to have Victor read the letter that was left on his basket. The family took him in and they treated him like it was their own child. Since there was no last name given to them on the letter, both the mom and the dad that found him gave him their last name for his name. His name is Victor Frankenstein. Yes, Victor Frankenstein from Frankenweenie is the grandson of Victor Van Dord and the biological son of Jack Skellington. You can tell by his resemblance to Victor Van Dord mostly. One other feature that Victor Frankenstein shares with his father is their curiosity of solving problems and coming up with solutions. Also, they're both curious about their surroundings and learning more about anything. In the movie Frank and Weenie, Victor Frankenstein was 11 years old. He lost his dog Sparky in a car accident. He found a way to bring his dog back from the dead. All three characters have two things in common. One, they're all related by blood. And number two, they all have dog companions with them. Just like how this photo of the Tim Burton theory is told. And that's what would have happened if Victor Van Dord married Emily. The Tim Burton theory might have made more sense. The picture is not the same person. They're just family members in different time periods. Only by one thing guys, if only Victor married Emily in Court's Bride, then this theory might have made more sense and it would have come true. That is it guys, that is it for this video, thank you so much for watching all the way through. If you guys did enjoy this video, make sure to give this video a big thumbs up. Also share it with your friends or family if they're very interested in these movies. Thank you so much for watching again, make sure to like and subscribe and also follow me on my social medias, links are in the description below. As always guys, live to the fullest.